Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a saint. You pure and holy, try. Sanctuary. Oh, for you. Come on, Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare to be. Pure and holy. Tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be sanctuary. Oh, for you. Come on, let's go up a little higher. Lord, prepare me. To be pure and holy, tried and true. Ooh, and with thanksgiving, I'll be sanctuary. Lord for you. Awesome. 
things are going wrong. We still going to look to the hills where we're coming by help. And we realize that help coming from you, and from you and me alone. Only from you, Lord. You are our strength. For the Bible says, in our weakness. Hey, hey, hey. In our weakness, you are our strength. Lord, so often we get weak. A lot of times we don't know which way to go. But we know we can call on you. It might not be the answer that we want, but we can always call on you. Early in the morning. When we're just riding around in our car, we can always talk to you. But we just be patient and not act on our own. We'll get the word that we need to hear from you. Father, we need you. We cannot make this journey on our own. Every step, every minute, every second, or every hour, we need you. Walk with us. Talk with us. Let us know. As you have we have been, let us know when we're doing wrong. Help us to help somebody else along this journey. For we know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, help us to walk in the light that others might see that they want to turn from their wicked ways and seek your faith. And we'll give you the praise for it all. Thank you again for our assembly here. Bless the church family as a whole. Every auxiliary of the church. Every member, every unmember. Everybody that is assembled here this morning. Bless us, dear God. That we might serve you better. And do what does say the Lord. And may we continue to give you the praise for everything that comes in our lives. Forgive us for our shortcomings, for our wrongdoings, and our shortcomings. But we still want to praise you. For we ask these blessings in our Son Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. This is personal. I'll be your worshiper. You got to tell them for yourself. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your word. I'll be. I'll be. I'll be your worshiper. Listen. King of kings, Lord of lords. Prince of B, I'll be your worshiper. Come on, King. King, Lord of Law. Prince of Peace, I'll be. King of Kings, Lord of Law. Prince of Peace, your worshiper. King. Lord of laws, Prince of Peace, I'll be your worshiper. King of kings, Lord of laws, Prince of Peace, I'll be your worshiper. King of kings, Lord of laws, Prince of Peace, I'll be your I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be. Come on, King of Kings. King of Kings. Lord of Lords. Prince of Peace. I'll be your worshiper. King of Kings. Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace, I'll be your worshiper. King of Kings, 
Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace, I'll be, I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper. I'll be your worshiper.
of God millions said we wouldn't make it but look at you 19 months having to wear a mask 19 months not seeing your loved ones 19 months of not knowing which way to go. 19 months of not being able to have what we call normal church. But you ought to be shouting because it was God's grace. It's cold in this church. There ought to be a fire burning because you know what you've been through. But you don't know what your neighbor been through. And you want to come in here and act stuck up in sedity. Like a silent statue. Don't you know your praise can be the healing for somebody else? Don't you know if you start giving God the praise, the honor, somebody else will start giving him the praise. Somebody else will start giving him the honor. Because the Bible says if we learn how to touch and agree, ta, 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 if we learn how to touch and agree, somebody can get a breakthrough. Somebody can get a healing. But I need you to shout on my behalf because I may not be able to shout. And there may come a time that you can't shout and you need me to shout for you. So baby, shout for me right now. I love this church. I said, shout for me right now. Because you don't know what they're going through. Somebody got to bury a mama this week. And somebody already buried their mama. Somebody got to bury a husband this week. Somebody got to bury a son this week. But yet you still on top of the ground. Okay, let me come get you. Let me come get you. Because trust me, I love the scientists. I love whoever came up with the Pfizer. I love who came up with the Moderna. And you know I love Johnson and Johnson. But my faith ain't in none of those three. Some of y'all gotta go get your booster shot. But my faith ain't in that. My faith is I'm covered by the blood what can make me whole again what can make me nothing but the blood of Jesus that's why I come to church Sunday after Sunday to give him praise to give him honor to give him glory and and if y'all see some of y'all got that Mikhail spirit it don't take all that David David you an educated person I knew God before I got my high school diploma I knew God before I got my bachelor's my master's and my doctoral so you can have all of them just give me Jesus you might as well go on and praise them this bit this better than panic fitness this is a no judgment zone and if your neighbor looking at you like he don't take all that tell your neighbor to hell with you because you don't know what God has brought me through you don't know what I've been through you don't know about my no good kids you don't know about my no good husband you don't know about my no good wife and hell you don't know about what my personal business so shout
Y'all waiting on me. I'm waiting on y'all. You, you, don't, you, don't need no, you don't need no praise pumper. You go on and praise them for yourself. You don't need me to instruct you because I don't know what God has done for you. I, I, I got to praise. I got to praise and I got to get it out. I got to praise. I, I got to praise. I got to praise. I gotta get it out. I gotta pray. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot in here. It must be Jesus in the atmosphere. I said it's hot, it's hot, it's hot in here. It must be Jesus in the atmosphere. I said it's hot, it's hot, it's hot in here. It must be Jesus in the atmosphere. I said it's hot, it's hot, it's hot in here. It must be Jesus in the atmosphere. You better go and get it out because if you do this on your job, they, they might fire you. If you do this at home, they might think you're crazy. If you're doing this in your car, they might think you're drunk driving. So you might as well go on and get it out right now. don't know nothing about this. This is between you and God. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than Put your personal praise on it. Let them know how much you love them. Let them know how much you adore him. Let him know how much you should mock him. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more. Hmm. Ta 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 ta. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. There's a prophetic movement going on in this atmosphere. God is saying to somebody right now stop playing with me and if you stop playing with me I'll give it back to you mm. 
Stop worrying about how people are going to perceive you. Because that person didn't wake you up. If you want it back, you on this side. I got my eyes closed, but I, I see you. And I'm not even going to call you out. You know right now that you playing with God. God said, I give it back to you if you stop playing with me. Stop quenching the spirit. If I tell you to shout, you better shout. <laughs> but it's up to you if you want it back. Y'all remember when David and the men came back and they had took David wives they destroyed the city and the men wanted to stone David and David called for the priest he said you bring me the ephod now David was the king but he went out of his kingly duties and became his own priest and David went to God with the ephod and he asked God God shall I pursue and will I recover it all and God spoke to David and said pursue and you will recover and as David and the men were going there was a man who had been left there for three days that man was at the point of death and notice what the man said he said I was a part of the people who destroyed your city but if you promise not to kill me I'll tell you where they at and listen David recovered it all because a man who was supposed to have been dead got up and the only way you gonna recover is because that man who died and got up is gonna give it all back to you But you got to stop playing with them. <laughs> I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Come on, we getting ready to pray. Go ahead and type those names. I love you, Jesus. Mm. I worship and you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I More than anything, 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 more than anything. More than anything, 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 more than anything. More than anything, 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 
More than anything. More than anything. More than anything. More than anything. for anything we just want to thank you for last night's lying down for how you watched over us all night long and then Lord right early this morning you touched us with the finger of divine love saying servant behold a brand new day and for this we tell you before we ask you for anything else can you just ease troubling minds right now continue to bless the Stiggers and the Martin and the Zachary family bless Hattie Q Jackson and brother Jesse Jackson bless Miss Lisa Cheek and her daughter this morning and then, God, there's more that I don't even know. But they need to know that you are still God. You sit high and you still look low. Thank you, my master, for bringing us from last Sunday to this Sunday. Millions started out with us, but we're still in the land of the living yes. this week has been a little rough for some people but yet the roughness has taught us how to pray to you yes. some people had some some, some some rough days on their job some people had some rough days at school some people had some rough days at home but God thank you for the rough days because the rough days have brought us closer to you and the more we get close to you, the more we learn that you are prayer answering God. So God, I don't have to send you nowhere. Because you're everywhere at the same time. But God, there's some members in the hospital that just need to hear a word from you. Lord, let your will be done touch their bodies touch their hearts and touch their minds heal when you get ready to heal deliver whenever you get ready and then God while you're at the hospital those doctors who are tired right now you're better than a five hour energy drink you're better than a B12 booster shot. Renew their strength as only you can. Let them know that their labor is not in vain. Bless the nurses, oh God, who feel like throwing in the towel. Let them know, God, that you still got your hand upon them. 
every cafeteria worker, every custodian, every social worker, every caregiver, security guard, cover hospitals as only you can. I'm grateful to hear that the hospital went from red to yellow this week. That lets me know that prayer still works. Then God, those members that's in the nursing home, common lesson home who children had just put them there and forgot all about them. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. So God, when they feel like they're by themselves, when children are not answering the phone, when family members are not out answering the phone, let them know that they can talk to you. Because you're a friend that's still closer than a brother. Bless those members who are at home right now. Let them know that you're still gone. And you still will take care of them. God, are we not ashamed to say we got members behind the prison wall? You're a God of another chance. Because every day you give me chances after chances to get it right with you. Mm. God bless him, I'm hungry. Continue to put your hand over us. Continue to make us to be the church that you want us to be. God, strengthen this, your servant. Strengthen every auxiliary, every ministry. Because God, one of these days, we got to close up our hymn books and our Bibles. Stick our sword in the sand of life to study war no more. So God, as you hear my prayer, bless the Wilson family, the Fraser family, the Flinord family, the Gibson family, the Landers family, the Barber family, the Ridgeway family, the Pollard family, the Hutchison family, the Hughley family, the Thomas family, the Dozier family, the Fisher family, the Gray family, the Jones family, the St. George family, the Carter family, the Hargett family, the Truett family, the Jackson family, the Bradley family, the Ogretree family, the Hall family, the Hayes family, the Martin family. Would you bless the Smith family, the Pharaoh family? Would you bless the Reed family, the Phillips, the McCullers, the Andrews, the Bensley, the Thomas? The Amos, the McCant, the Harris, the Smith, the Lees, the, the Hodge, the Wares, the Woods. Would you bless the Adams, the Lowe, the Howe, the Wilson? Would you just bless as only you can? And in your name shall get all the praise, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name. That we pray. God is, God is my all, and all. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never 
to leave me and never, never come short of his word. I got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way, keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I come too far and I never got in said one more time for me Oh! 
if you brought your Bibles. John chapter 13. Verses 1 through 20. The Gospel of John. Chapter 13. Verses 1 through 20. It is a long passage of scripture. But we need it for the entirety of this text. Sir, thank you. For the movement of the Holy Spirit in this place. Thank you for confirmation. Now, sir, we would see Jesus. I'm your instrument, so play me in any key that you see fit. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. John chapter 13. Getting at verse number one for the New Century Version. It was almost time for the Passover feast. Jesus knew that it was time for him to leave this world and go back to the Father. He had always loved those who were his own in the world. And he loved them all the way to the end. Jesus and his followers were at the evening meet, evening meal. The devil had already persuaded Judas Iscariot, the son of Simeon, to turn against Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him power over everything and that he had come from God and was going back to God. So during the meal, Jesus stood up and took off his outer clothes. Taking a towel, he wrapped it around his waist. Then he poured water into a bowl and began to wash the followers' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I am doing but you will understand later Peter said no you will never wash my feet Jesus answered if I don't wash your feet you are not one of my people Simon Peter answered Lord then wash not only my feet but wash my hands and my head too Jesus said after a person had a bath his whole body is clean. He needs only to wash his feet. And you men are clean, but not all of you. Jesus knew who would turn against him. And that is why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and sat down again. He asked, do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that is what I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash each other's feet. I did this as an example so that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. A servant is not greater than his master. A messenger is not greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not talking about all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to bring about what the scripture says. The man who ate at my table has turned against me. I am telling you this now before it happens so that when it happens 
you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accept anyone I send also accept me. And whoever accept me also accept the one who sent me. Back to verse number four. So during the meal, Jesus stood up and took off his outer clothing, taking a towel, he wrapped it around his waist. And I want to talk about the message of the towel. The message of the towel. My brothers and sisters, everybody wants a title, but nobody wants the work. Ministry is not about having a title. It's about having work. Now, go ahead and look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, if you get offended, so what? Now, look at your other neighbor and say, if you get offended, so what? Now, look at the ones who didn't say nothing. Them the ones that are going to get offended. I had the opportunity this week of logging into a pastors and leadership conference at the Berean Christian Church in Stone Mountain, Georgia. There, Pastor Curran Lee, who is the best friend of my newfound mentor and friend, Pastor Donald L. Johnson, put this pastor and leadership conference on. And because I'm connected to Pastor Johnson, I had the privilege of getting all the material from this conference and as I which something I normally don't do I sat in front of my iPad all night Wednesday did a trip to Perry Georgia went to the fair don't hate celebrate had fun at the fair and then went back to the bus and logged back in on my phone to be a part of this pastor and leadership conference and the number one thing that they taught us on Wednesday and Thursday is ministry is work. Ministry will get messy because you got some messy people in your church. Don't get mad. I told you, if you get offended, so what? For a whole year, pastors and Sunday school teachers have stood in an empty sanctuary stood before a Zoom, a camera, and the church kept on rolling. But now you want to come back to church and think that church is going back to the way it used to be. I need to tell you, it's not going to happen. If you wasn't here during the pandemic, don't think your voice mean anything to me. Were you here when we had to fight against news cameras, news media. Were you here? No, you were not. Ministry is messy. And the problem why ministry is messy, I'm still in verse number four. I'm coming to get you in a minute. The reason why ministry is messy is because nobody wants to pick up the towel. Everybody wants to sit. I say that one more time. Nobody wants to pick up the towel. Everybody wants to sit. Now, let's look at the text because you already tuned me out. It is Jesus who is at somebody else's house for an evening meal. Now, in that day in culture, the servant will meet the guests at the door and wash their feet before they came in the house because they did not have transportation they walked everywhere they needed to go so they got dust on their feet and dust on their sandals so it is the person whose house you at is to have somebody there with a bowl and a towel to wash your feet before you enter into the house but sadly nobody wants to worship or wash I know that you think that the choir is the thing that will grow a church but can I be honest it is the greeters and the ushers who can bring people in or run people away how you greet people when they come to the church shows what type of church you really are 
got to be careful who you put at the door to greet the people look what Jesus says Jesus says none of y'all got up to wash feet but you got a problem that the master started washing your feet that's what's wrong with the church everybody says somebody would do it anybody can do it and nobody winds up doing it I got rewind on my mind because you say it's not my job it's not in my job description matter of fact nothing's really in your job description when you are a Christian your job is to love and to serve one another notice what Jesus says you are not greater than the master would simply say if Jesus can wash feet surely you can look out for your brother or sister if Jesus can come to this low land of sorrow he'll deliver and set free teach us how to live what about you so as I was on that that, that, that conference they kept hitting on and this is going to be a sermon series ministry is work this whole 19 months has taken all of us out of our comfort zone. You got to learn Zoom, Facebook, YouTube. Matter of fact, some of y'all had to trade in your dinosaur flip phone for a smartphone. And you thought that smartphone was going to be hard to learn. And you come to realize that it's easier than the flip phone. Because on the flip phone, you got to, you know, one is A, B, C. So you got to hit it until you get to the letter. And if you miss the letter, you got to delete and do it all over again. Now you got the letters there for you that it's easy for you to text. Can I tell you, I love getting text messages from members 70 and up. And sometimes, you know, you got to re try to read what they say. But it's just the joy of them learning how to text. And then they even got so good, they're using emojis. I said, go on with your bad self. But that ain't the right emoji to send me. <laughs> but it's work and they're learning because they're learning that in this 22nd century sorry we're not in the 21st century anymore we have moved to the 22nd century and if the church don't keep up with the work that the church is supposed to do then we might as well close the doors of the church and take the sign down and never meet again but it's our job to meet the needs of the people John is writing this to prove to Christians and non-Christians that Jesus is who he said he is. I, I don't care how you look at it. You can call him Jehovah Jireh. He's that. You can call him Jehovah Tanisianu. He's that. You can call him Jehovah uh, Shalom. He's your peace. Whatever you need, Jesus is who he said he is. John the Apostle, he tells us, he says, look how Jesus carefully instructs us point number one we have y'all ready for point number one point number one is this uh, humility Jesus and the father that's verses one through five how Jesus talks about the humility that him and the father have and that's the same humility that we ought to have with Jesus People ought to know that Jesus sent you and you didn't go on your own. I'm sneaking around your back door. People ought to know that you are a part of the royal priesthood because it's not about you, it's about him. And notice what Jesus always says, I came to do the will and the meat of the Father. I didn't come here with my own agenda, I came here with the Father's agenda. And baby Baba in the church, we ought to have God's agenda and not our own. Can I tell you what Mother Haywood Crawford told me? God don't care nothing about your opinion. 
I believe I got a rerun. Um, um, uh, she was a member of Fountain of Life in Detroit. Uh, Fountain of Life, Mother Haywood Crawford, her husband pastored that church. She was 90 years old, walked with a walker, but watch this, she's like Mother Stack. When she went to teach, she didn't need to walk. That's how the Holy Ghost works. You may come in here limping. You may come here on a cane. You may come here bound. But when the Holy Ghost show up, you don't need none of that. And so she would teach the women how to be women. And she said, young preacher, if God called you to preach, God don't care nothing about your opinion. It's all about what's in the book. I got rewind. I got rewind. Jesus carefully instructs the disciples how to continue living when he leaves. Y'all do know he's getting ready to leave us. He's been teaching them chapter 1 to chapter 5, preparing them chapter 5 to chapter 10, telling them chapter 10 to chapter 13, letting them know, look, I'm getting ready to leave y'all. And the ministry and the work has to go on. I cannot tell y'all that's what's wrong with the African American church. I told y'all I got a degree in black church history. We don't want to change, we don't want to train the next person to take our position. Huh? To death do us part is not about your position in the church. That's about you and your spouse. Ain't nobody want to talk to me. We we I told y'all, it's, it's, it's serious. I, I love that conference. Y'all to go ahead and go on Berean Christian Church and, and rewatch it. We, as the African American church, are doing our own self a disloyal because we keep people in positions because they are family. Knowing they can't do the work. But because they've been there so long, we're just going to keep them there. Ain't nobody come to talk to me. When somebody else is ready to pick up the towel and work, you too mad, you too angry, you too miserable to let somebody else do the work because you're mad they're going to outshine you. But can I tell you, we all are on the same team. All of us are to work together for the edifying in the building and the training of the church. After he died and the first report came back that Jesus was alive, the disciples could not believe. Notice what Jesus says. He says, not all of you are clean. I made this as a Facebook post and it, and, it, and, it, and it raised a whole lot of eyebrows. Some Judases you inherit and some you just pick. I got Bible because y'all looking at me. Jesus picked all 12 of his disciples. Jesus picked Judas knowing that Judas was going to betray him. But Judas is necessary in all our lives. Because Judas teach you how to pray and Judas teach you how to watch who you give your vision, who you tell. Ain't nobody talking to me. So Judas is necessary. And whatever ministry you in, you got a Judas. In the choir, on the usher board, matron, mission, deacons, uh, sound, musicians, whatever. There's always a Judas. And guess what? You don't only have a Judas, but you got a Thomas. You got people who doubt everything that God tells you. People who doubt that what you are, what you are. So you got a Judas and you got a Thomas. Hold on, but you got an Andrew. Andrew is them cheap folk. Y'all remember Andrew, don't you? Lord, we only got two pence. Is that enough to feed such a crowd like this? Always telling you what you can't do. I'm sneaking in your back because they hold on to the money. 
saying how they gonna steal the money. Ain't nobody talking to me. So your Judas, your Thomas, and your Andrew is important for your ministry. Because all three of them boogers put you closer to God. Have you turning over your plate? Have you praying? Have you fasting? And making sure that the ministry go forward. Can, can I deal with the text? I told y'all verse number four is my, is my main thing. Because why did Jesus have to wash their feet and they didn't wash each other's feet? Here comes tradition. Here come y'all tradition. We ain't never done it before, so why should we do it now? This ain't my house. They knew and they invited us over here. Somebody should have been at the door washing our feet. Okay, let me come get you. When I come to your house, the first thing you tell me, Reverend, take your shoes off. Tradition. Okay, let me come get you. Uh, in Africa, in Africa, they call them porch monkeys. Goes back to biblical days that if you had money, you had a two-story hut. But if you didn't have money, you had a one-story hut, and it was flat. And you had steps going on the side so you could sit on top of your hood and be nosy. That's why grandmama and them love the front porch. Because they sat outside on the front porch. Watch who went by. Come on, talk to me, Demetrius. Had that long telephone cord. Got, got, got up to date. Put that banana on the back of the... Girl. In about 2.6 seconds, you're going to see a blue car by, go by. Girl, I saw who the driver was, but who else was in that car? Because we all are stuck in tradition. But Jesus says, I came not to just break tradition, but to let you know that it's your job to serve one another. Look, look, look at the text. Look at the text. Jesus said, Okay, Noel, I don't know which one it's going to pop up on, but I'm going to give you the verse because because they don't believe the Bible. Huh, y'all, y'all ready? Let me let me do some 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 Sunday morning and Wednesday at the same time. Uh, y'all ready? Verse number 6. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, "Lord, are you going to wash my feet?" We don't know if Peter was being there you go. Talk to me. Or was he just, Lord, you better wash my feet? Or was he serious, like, Lord, I don't know. You're Jesus. I'm Peter. You don't wash my feet. But notice what Jesus says. If I don't do this, you have no part with me. Peter says, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head. And Jesus says to us, if you already took a bath, you clean. But that which has gotten dirty needs to be washed. I'm coming in your back door. That is why, beloved, when you are saved, you're always saved. You don't have to keep getting baptized over and over again. You just ask God to work on whatever it is that you got dirty. So God, because I was lusting after Sister Cornbread, wash my eyes. Because I touched some stuff, ain't nobody talking to me, that I shouldn't touch, wash my hands. Because I thought some stuff, I shouldn't have thought, clean my heart. Because I went some places, I shouldn't have went, wash my feet. Anybody here need the Lord to wash you? Okay, okay, y'all trying to act like y'all holy. Come here, David. David was a man after God's own heart. Y'all ain't come to talk to me. A man after God's own heart. And look what he prayed to God. Lord, have mercy on me. David, why need to have mercy? Because I, I done messed up, God. Create in me a clean heart. Wash me. And that ought to be your 
your prayer, God, as I'm doing ministry, as I'm doing work, created me. Wash me, God. Look at it, 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 look at it. Because y'all don't like this. Verse number 10, no well, that's where we going. Verse number 10, because I I feel the anointing in here. Jesus said, a person has had a bath, his whole body is clean. He needs only to wash his feet. And you men are clean. <laughs> Let me put that. Y'all know a comma means pause. And then here come a conjunction word. But not all of you. Okay, okay. Uh, this is where y'all gonna get offended. Every eleventh person, the twelfth one in here, is a devil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, devil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, devil. Because everybody who come to church ain't clean. Some of you come into church because you're after a position that you know you ain't worthy to have. Ooh, it's about to get tight. But it's show about to get right. How you own the position you don't even come to Bible study? How you own the position you don't even pay time? first point was humility, Jesus, and God, right? Here got my second point, Jesus and Peter. Because all of us in here know a Peter. Think that you ought to be able to talk and you ignorant. Look, okay, y'all don't, I've done my homework. Because y'all don't want to talk. But that's all right. I got you. I'm coming to get you. I'm really coming to get you. Peter watched the Lord wash his friend's feet. He became more and more disturbed and could not understand what he was doing. Listen to this. Listen to this. As you read the life of Christ in the gospel, you cannot help but notice how Peter often spoke impulsively out of his ignorance and had to be corrected every time by Jesus. I got I just got a few for y'all because y'all don't think I, I study. Peter opposed Jesus going to the cross, Matthew 16 and 21, where Jesus said, get thee behind me, Peter. Every time Jesus wanted to do ministry, and I told y'all this, that I told y'all Judas, Thomas, Andrew, now there's some Peter. Speak out ignorantly. Jesus, what you mean you're going to the cross? Right? You ain't going to the cross. I came to die. This is my assignment. And when my assignment is over, I'm out. And beloved, sadly, in the church, you got Peters who are trying to stop the will and the assignment of God going forward. I got one more because y'all don't like that. On the mountain of transfiguration, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah appeared. I told you that, that Jesus always had to take Peter, James, and John because those three always got him into trouble. And when the three showed up, they fell down. Peter got up and said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's build three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and Jesus had to correct Peter and God says, this is my beloved son. The Bible says that Moses and Elijah went away. And I said one more time, the reason why 
Moses showed up is because Moses never died. I'm looking for my Bible. Niggas, niggas, Moses never died. Heard Moses never died. I got the Bible. Jude does not have chapters. It's just a book by itself. The Bible says in Jude number nine, y'all, 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 one of these days, it's coming. I'm going to get somebody to work this, this system so I can put the scriptures up on the screen because y'all don't know the Bible. Jude number nine says that the angel and Satan is still to this day fighting over the body of Moses because God, when Moses struck the rock, God took Moses and hid him in the cave and then took that cave and hid it in another cave and Moses never died so Moses came back to show Peter, James and John that this is he who is God and I'm just here to turn in my law book wish y'all knew the Bible in here Elijah never died Elijah and Elijah so I just want, I, I just want a double portion he said, if you're with me, I'll make sure you get it. And that's why we sing that song, Swing Low, Sweet Chair. Bible says Elijah just went up and he remembered the promise that he, and he threw back. The prophet of all prophets, Elijah showed up to show Peter, James, and John that God is who he said he is. But can I tell you, before God show up, Moses and Elijah got to come back and die. I wish y'all would read the Bible. The Bible says that, uh, let me show you how the Bible really reads it. The Bible says there are two witnesses that got to come back and die. And we know that those two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. And some people say, well, what about Enoch? Enoch lived and Enoch went away. He just started walking with God because ain't nobody talking. Ministry means work. It's messy being a leader. Because you got messy folks. Now, here it come. Just imagine pastoring 200 people that got your same personality. I can't hear nobody. One of me, 200 of y'all, every different personality. That's why God gave you an under shepherd. Okay, I'm about to say something. I'm about to, uh, uh, uh. So shivers, they're going to get mad. You know why the Bible calls y'all sheep? Because sheep are dumb. Y'all going to get mad, but it's going to make sense. Sheep need somebody to tell them when to eat, when to stop eating, when to lay down. Okay, y'all, Big and Woody, they don't want to talk to me. A sheep would eat all day if you let. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 Peggy Jo, go in my office behind my microwave. Bring me that purple staff that Wanda made for me. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to pass the ignorant church. The Bible calls ministry work because you got to be retrained. Mimi, headset. I, I feel this anointing in here. We come to church week after week with the same mindset, thinking that things should be, and it's not. Notice what God, God says. Uh, Behold, I do a new thing. Woo, we don't want to have church. Okay, let, me, let me tell y'all something. This week has been crazy for me. So I didn't finish this sermon to midnight last night. And it's not done because God said it's about to be a sermon series. Ministry will cause you that you got to go out of town to go be with a member when they bury their son. To show up at places when you know people don't like you. But you got to have ministry to show them that greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Ministry. 
knowing they can't stand your guts, knowing they talk about you, but you show up anyway, as my pastor said, you got to welcome them with glad hands. Ministry. And so the Bible says that, 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 that they're sheep. So God gives you a under shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. I'm the, you got me? I'm the under shepherd. So that's why the shepherd has a staff. The hook is to bring you back when you get out of line. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. So you got sheep that go astray. And you got to hook them back. But then you got some hard-headed ones that you got them. Did you not see the painting? Do a shepherd leave the 99 and go after the one? And when he finds the one, he picks the one back up and brings the one back to the fold. Ain't nobody talking. About. This is why everybody can't be a leader. This is why you have to. I, it's 200 of y'all one of me I don't need to adapt to y'all y'all adapt to me because God okay y'all don't want they don't want to talk to me sister Allen God says and I will give you pastors according to my heart so God loved Mount Hermon if you really did what you said you did because you got too many churches that, that are just stealing other credentials and some of y'all ain't got what y'all asked the pastor for. You want to do my background check? Let me do yours. You want to do my credit check? You ain't got no money. Ain't nobody talking to me. Huh? You out here with illegitimate children but want to talk about the preacher. I'm in the text. Ministry is work and you got to make sure in this ministry that you watch your Judas your Thomas your Andrew and your Peter look at the text look at the text it's Peter God you ain't washing my feet guess what ministry means you got to get dirty Huh? Thank you for standing up, Brother Bobby Jackson. Bro, bro, brother Bobby Jackson told me on uh, Thursday. He told me on Thursday. He said, Reverend, um, I like your robes, but I, I want to see you in your suits. He said, because you're a fine young man. But Brother Jackson, I can't wear my suit all the time because sometimes I got to get dirty. Okay, let me show you. Let me, let me, let me show you. Let me show you. you uh, 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 everybody got a uniform. You know the police by his uniform. You know a paramedic by their uniform. You know the, doc the doctors wear green scrubs and the lab tech wear blue scrubs and the nurses wear whatever, dark blue or whatever. You know them by the color that they wear. But the question is, what are you wearing to show people that you're a Christian? I'm still in the text. I'm still in the text. Y'all gonna get mad. I told you because everybody wants I'm this, I'm that, but nobody wants to pick up this. Nobody wants to get down and dirty in ministry. Nobody, because guess what? When you pick up this towel, this gives you the reason to have folks talk about you, lie on you, and you ain't did nothing to them. And the only reason they mad is because you got the title and they don't. Okay, I, I told y'all, I told y'all, black church history is my thing. We make people the chief usher because they nobody in the world. You ain't got to say that. You a janitor on your job. But when you become the chief usher, you feel like everybody got to respect you. 
because you mad because you ain't getting respect out there so you want to bring your arrogance in here and then you run everybody away because you ain't getting treated out like that oh I got some next for you the chairman of the deacon board no point intended I'm just teaching black church history the only reason the chairman, uh, this black church history, you take it however you want it. The chairman really don't supposed to vote. His job is to break a tie if there's a tie. Oh, y'all ain't talking. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. He's the chair. He's the chair. Of the meeting. He's to bring it to the, the 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 board, and then the board votes. And that's why on any board it should be a I number. Just teaching y'all black. See, this is work. But the problem is, nobody wants to do the work. You want the fame, you want the glory, but you don't want the work. And Jesus says, if I can get down and dirty and work, surely you can get down and dirty and work because greater work shall you do because I'm going back to the Father. So you got humility, Jesus' relationship with the Father. You got Jesus' relationship with Peter. Now, Jesus' relationship with his disciples. Verses 12 through 17. I'm just doing a little teaching on a Sunday morning. Look what he says. When he had finished washing their feet, he put his clothes and sat down again. Do you understand what I have just done for you? You call me teacher. You call me Lord. And you are right. Because that is what I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash each other feet. Now, we don't do foot washing here, so don't, don't think that we're going that way. But he's actually saying, if I can get to the lowest part of you and help you become clean, then you can do the same thing for your brother or your sister. If you know your brother or sister got an addiction, you ought to help them. You, 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 ain't, you ain't the one out there doing drugs. You just trying to get them from the crack house. You ain't the one out there selling your body. You trying to get them from not selling. That means whatever they go. Look what Paul says. Paul says, I became whatever to all men that, that I may win them over to Christ. So that means sometimes you got to take off your sulo halo and talk to people just like they T.I. is. Okay, let me, let me come get you. I, I sent a, fr a, a few people that I, that, that, that I talked to, a few people I trust. I sent them a few pictures on Friday night. I was at a drunk party on Friday night. Auburn and started back up their drunk party. And so we're in the middle of nowhere. Auburn got mansions and, and clubhouses that nobody knew about but them. On some of these back roads, they got, they got some man. Auburn got a mansion out this world. And, and, and so listen to me I got college students and I know I'm saved but I don't rebuke them talking about oh, y'all going to this party just drink you get on this bus drunk no you become all things to all men so what does that mean? You become normal. You become a person and talk to them. And if they see how you act, then it wins them back over to God. And, and so, and so we, 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 we in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. And they're asking me like, hey man, you like driving a bus? I said, man, this is just a hobby. A hobby? What do you do? He said, you know what? we said that there was something different about you you didn't judge us when we got on the bus when we almost fell you helped us are y'all with me you ain't got to put down on what they do just be a light before them that's why some folks don't like y'all coming to family reunions now that's why they don't invite you nowhere because they're in there trying to drink. You know you shouldn't be drinking. That's your family. 
But if you live the life before them, then when they want to drink, they'll go outside. Ain't nobody talking to me. Okay, I'm going to talk about my family because y'all don't want me to talk about your family. It's, it, it's a tradition in my family that when you get turned 21, my uncles take you to the strip club and y'all y'all know the rest of the story. But they respected the anointing on me that the same money they would have spent at the strip club just put it in my hand and said, even though we your family, we not going to disrespect you like that. Ministry is work. And I want to know as we're getting ready to pick up new auxiliary people, don't put nobody back in office. Who ain't going to pick up the towel? If they ain't did nothing in four years that I've been here, they ain't going to do nothing now. Because truly, if they haven't caught my spirit yet, something wrong. I got Bible. I got Bible because y'all y'all get mad at me. Quay, they get mad at me, but Jimmy Crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy Crack corn and I don't care. Look what Peter told him. Lord, what you mean? He said, not all of you are clean. Because he knew Judas was going to betray him. So he was already prepared. And he, look, 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 I got Bible. Notice what the Bible says. He told them so that when it happened, they knew that the scripture would come to pass and that he is. Ain't nobody talking to me. So then, Sister Pat Woody, when they all sat down for the Lord's Supper, that's right before the Last Supper, he said, one of you will betray me. And all of them said, Lord, I'm waiting on y'all to catch up. All of them said, Lord, is it I? Now, they wouldn't have had to say that, Sister uh, uh, Ray, if they had not thought about it or if they hadn't already. I'm waiting on y'all to catch up because if you knew you ain't did nothing wrong if you knew when people come to you you ain't got to say is it me look what they said Lord is it I and Jesus said the one who did it and can't you see Judas looking like uh oh whatever you do do it quickly and Judas went and hung himself because he knew that he could not face the consequence and can I tell you there's a lot of folks in church that spiritually hung themselves that's why you can't feel the spirit when the spirit show up you you dead I'm, I'm, I'm bending around the corner because I'm going to pick this back up because that conference was mm -mm good to me because it's teaching me that Lamar it's going to get messier the more you try to shift that church can I show you how many of y'all been on a cruise y'all been on the ship okay the ship somebody said they were scared <laughs> The ship leaves the dock. But it takes that ship a day and a half to turn around. Ain't nobody talking to me. So it, little bit, by little bit, by little bit. And God said, the way you're going to ship this church is a little bit, little bit, little bit little bit Mary you can use that one little bit by little bit 
by a little bit. Ministry takes work. And are you, rhetorical question, ready to work? Are you ready to work? The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. For on a hill called Calvary, he died, but he didn't stay there. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Father, we thank you for your word, the message of the towel, calling us to work, not to sit, because if you can get down and wash our feet, we can get down and help our brother. Thank you, my master, for teaching us to be humble. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, you might be here as a candidate for baptism, water baptism. Might be here for Christian experience. You might have strayed away. And you're saying, Reverend, I want to be a part of that ministry. I want to be a part of that team. You can come right now. The doors of the church are open. 